Hello, my name is Samantha, and I'm one of the embryologists here at Western Fertility Institute. I'm here today to answer any questions you may have once you've received your embryo report. And I'm happy to walk you through exactly what you're looking at. Your embryo report consists of two components, the genetic results, known as PGTA results, and your embryo grading. First, we will review the most important aspect of your report, which are your PGTA results. This type of test allows us to foresee any genetic disorders, chromosomal abnormalities, and the sex of the embryo. Next, we will go over how the lab grades individual embryos. This aspect is not as influential as the genetic results. However, it is still performed in the lab so that way we have insight into how the embryos are growing on a daily basis. PGTA stands for Pre-Implantation Genetic Testing for Enuploidy. This test basically allows us to see if your embryos have the proper number of chromosomes. When looking at your PGTA results, your embryos will be separated into two categories, euploid and aneuploid. These are basically just fancy terms for normal and abnormal. Your first category are euploid embryos, which are going to be normal, having exactly 46 chromosomes. The second category are aneuploid embryos, which are going to be abnormal. However, both categories are going to show you the sex of the embryo, either an XX being female or an XY being male. Let's look at an example of a report. Here we see three embryos under the euploid category, embryos numbers 2, 4, and 6. All three of these embryos are genetically viable since they contain exactly 46 chromosomes. Additionally, there are three embryos under the aneuploid category. Embryo number 1 has results that show a 47 plus 13. This means that embryo number one has an extra chromosome, specifically chromosome number 13. Embryo number three results show a 45 with a minus 14. This means that the embryo has a missing chromosome, specifically chromosome number 14. Finally, we have our last aneuploid embryo, embryo number five. Even though these results still show that the embryo has the proper number of chromosomes, 46, the abnormality arises with a deletion in a section of chromosome number two. If your aneuploid embryo contains a deletion or duplication within a chromosome, the results will show either a DEL for deletion or a DUP for duplication. This abnormality is followed by a value in parentheses, which lists the chromosome number followed by a P or a Q, which identifies the location of the abnormality on that chromosome. An embryo develops in a fairly consistent manner. In the laboratory, we check the embryos a few times throughout their development. We check the day after an egg retrieval for successful fertilization. We check on day three, hoping for about six to eight cells. And again on days five through seven for successful blastocyst formation. We use what's known as the Gardner Blastocyst Grading System to grade the structural viability of each of your embryos. When looking at your report, your embryo grade will consist of a number followed by two letters. These three values represent different aspects of the embryo that we grade while looking at it under the microscope. The first number reflects the stage of blastocyst development. This number can range from a three to a six as your embryo slowly develops. A value of three and four are given once the cavity has expanded across the entire embryo. A value of five shows the embryo beginning to hatch out of its shell, also known as a zona. This is perfectly normal as the embryo will continue to expand and hatch in order to implant into a uterus. Once the embryo has fully hatched and is no longer surrounded by a shell, it is given a value of six. Next, the first letter is going to grade a structure within the embryo, known as the inner cell mass which will eventually develop into the fetus. The inner cell mass can be seen in photos as a small cluster of tightly packed cells. For an A quality grade, the inner cell mass will have a high number of cells that are very tightly packed together. The looser the formation and the fewer the cells are going to give the embryo a B or C quality grading. Finally, the second letter grade is gonna be in reference to an aspect known as the trophectoderm. The trophectoderm is going to develop into the placenta and surrounding environment for the fetus inside the womb. The trophectoderm is going to look like a tightly packed ring that surrounds the outer edge of the embryo. Just like the inner cell mass, an A quality is going to have a high volume of cells, a thicker ring that is tightly packed together. If the ring around the embryo is looser in formation and has fewer cells, then the grading will drop to a B or a C quality. Let's take a closer look at some examples. Here are two A quality embryos, a stage four and a stage five. An A quality embryo, you can see how full and tightly packed the cluster of cells are inside the embryo, as well as how thick the ring of cells are surrounding the embryo. 
Next, we have stage four and stage five B quality embryos. Here, the cells both inside the embryo and inside the outer ring are thinner and not as tightly packed together. Then we have C quality embryos, where you can clearly see that the cells are even more thin and loose compared to the A and B quality embryos. It is very common for your two letter grades to not be the same value. Since we are looking at two different aspects of the embryo, both the inner cell mass and trophectoderm are going to be graded separately and can each have a value of an A, B, or C. Here are a few more examples of differently graded embryos. The top two embryos are going to be an AB quality and the bottom two are a BA quality. When looking at the first letter, the inner cell mass of the top two embryos are going to be fuller and more tightly packed compared to the bottom embryos. The top two embryos have a B quality trophectoderm, so their outer ring of cells are going to be fewer and a little looser compared to the bottom embryos that have an A quality trophectoderm where the cells are thicker and more tightly packed together. Here's a C quality embryo example. It is a 4AC grading, so the inner cell mass is still fully expanded, thick and tightly packed. The trophectoderm is a C quality, so those cells are a loose ring around the outside and not as tightly packed. Next, we have a 3BC quality embryo. It is a stage three since it is not fully expanded. It's a little smaller than the other embryos. Its inner cell mass is a B quality, so the cells are still there, just not as full or tightly packed. And the trophectoderm is C quality, so it is a fairly thin and loose ring around the outside of the embryo. Just because your embryo has a C grade for one or both criteria does not necessarily mean that your embryo is a poor quality. We want to reassure you that whether your embryo is an A, B, or C quality grading, that it has the potential to be a positive pregnancy test and a successful life birth. In fact, every embryo you've seen thus far in this video has been an embryo we've transferred here at WFI and has resulted in a life birth. Of course, there is some intention behind our grading system. If you have the option between an A quality embryo and a C quality embryo, independent of sex, we would prefer you transfer the A quality embryo since it has been shown to have a higher successful implantation rate. I hope that's answered all of your questions. If you have anything specific to ask regarding your own embryos, feel free to contact your nurse or to give our office a call. And the lab will see you soon for transfers.